Good evening, everyone. If I may have your attention for a few moments for a couple of announcements before Mass. Solidarity Sunday is an integral part of Development and Peace, Caritas Canada's Share Lent campaign, a tradition since 1968. On this day, parishes across Canada hold a collection that gives Canadian Catholics a means of standing in solidarity with the most vulnerable communities in the Global South by supporting our work. With the entire human family suffering from COVID-19, the Share Lent campaign invites us to share love and express solidarity with our sisters and brothers in the Global South. Remembering the inherent dignity of all human beings, let us heed the Pope's reminder that justice and solidarity are not achieved once and for all. They have to be realized each day. To donate online, sign up for the monthly giving, or for more information about the work of Development and Peace and this year's Share Love, Share Land campaign, please visit the website. The 2022 Archdiocese of St. John's Chrism Mass is on Wednesday, April 6th at 7 p.m. The Mass of Chrism is one of the most solemn and important diocesan celebrations of the liturgical year. The Mass is a celebration of the institution of the ministerial priesthood and is a sign of the unity and communion of the priests with their bishop. The Mass takes its name from the blessing of the holy oils used in the sacraments throughout the year, which are then given to the priests to take back to their parishes. All are welcome to attend this celebration and it will be live streamed at www.thebasilica.net and www.thebasilica.church. Thank you. Welcome to the historic Basilica of St. John the Baptist. We welcome all of you present this evening and are joining us by live stream. We pray that you are in good health. We ask that all present respect the guidelines we have here at the Basilica to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers, maintaining a distance of two meters, and wearing face masks at all times in the church. We will not have a collection at this mass, but there are collection boxes provided for you at the entrance and exit of the church. You can use your envelopes to donate, or you can donate online on our parish website at thebasilica.church, or you can mail or drop off your donations to the parish office and receive a tax receipt. The donations pay for live streaming for the utilities and salaries of the parish, so our parish can keep operating. Thank you for continuing to support the Basilica Parish. At the time of communion, we will give you further instructions. At the end of Mass, we ask you to follow the usher's directions for leaving the church. Our opening hymn this evening is 371 in your Catholic Book of Worship, and our presider this evening is Archbishop Peter Hunt. Kindly stand. O Son of Justice, fill our hearts where sinfulness has brought decay, dispel the darkness of our souls, as now the night gives place to day. Make this a fitting time for us, a time to change and turn to Hear our prayer, most pure, patient Lord. Repentance in our hearts renew. So sanctify our penance, Lord, that strengthened by the graces one we may. Sinful lives and penance more surely run. A spring awakes the frozen earth, so Easter blooms from Lent's restraints. Rejoice, for Christ will conquer death and bring. His grace to make us saints. 
Trinity, we soon shall see that day of days when all creation born again will sing a Easter song of praise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. And with your spirit. In our psalm this evening, we hear the psalmist say, The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. We may worthily enter into the celebration. We call to mind the great things the Lord has done for us. And we ask him to help us that we may have his joy and his peace in our lives and be ministers of that for our world. sent to heal the contrite of heart Kyrie eleison Kyrie eleison You came to call sinners Christ eleison Christ at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response this evening, the Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord 
would restore the fortunes of Zion. We were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then it was said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we rejoiced. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the desert of the Negroth. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Those who go out weeping bearing the seed for sowing shall come home with shouts of joy carrying their sheaves the Lord has done great things for us we are filled with joy reading from a letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, Now that I have already obtained this and have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, 
King of endless glory. Return to me with all your heart, says the Lord, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning, he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery. And making her stand before the people, they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They said this to test Jesus so that they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When the scribes and the Pharisees kept on questioning him, Jesus straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again, Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground. When the scribes and Pharisees heard what Jesus had said, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I. Go your way, and from now on, do not sin again. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. In the psalm today we sang, the Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. And the gospel passage today is certainly one of those passages that should give us joy, the joy of knowing that we have a God who is ever merciful, ever willing to forgive. Pope Francis, uh, speaking in his encyclical Joy of the Gospel, said, God never tires of forgiving us. We are the ones who tire of seeking his mercy. The gospel passage, as well as being one that speaks to us of God's mercy, is also one that challenges us. It challenges us of that need we have for forgiveness and that none of us are perfect. One of the commentaries I read on today's gospel scripture said, in the name of religion, people can become increasingly conscious of the sins of others and decreasingly aware of their own. Those scribes and Pharisees who brought the adulterous woman to Jesus had conveniently selective memories. They could clearly recall what Moses had said about the sin of adultery, but they totally forgot what the prophet Micah had written about the requirements of justice, mercy, and humility before God. They were aware of the woman's immorality, but blind to their own pride greed, and arrogance. Good message. The challenge for each of us to look within ourselves rather than to look out at others, to become aware of our weaknesses, and, and to more than the weaknesses, to be aware of God's great mercy that he is willingly forgives us and seeks to have us as his children and living as his children in the way that he would want us to, with charity and love for all. In the second reading today, Paul says that he is straining forward to what lies ahead, that he presses on toward his goal. And so it is to be with us as well, straining forward to live our faith with mercy and love, pressing forward always to seek to do what is right and to live as the Lord would want us to. 
Lent is a special time for us to do that, and we have Lenten practices that help us with it. We're at the fifth, fifth week of Lent. We're well into it. It's a good time for us to recommit ourselves to sprinting to the finish, to doing our very best. This is Solidarity Sunday, as was announced at the beginning of Mass. For those of us who can afford to, it's a time for us to do almsgiving, to give to assist those who have less. We're called to prayer always, and the sacrament of confession, if we have not received it in this Lenten season yet, it's something for us to plan to do, to go and to celebrate God's mercy, to go and to bring to him our weaknesses and seek his assistance in doing better. For those of you who are married, if you don't know what your sins are, ask your spouse. They'll gladly tell you. It's also a time for us of fasting. And I think one of the things that today's readings call us to fast from is from judging others. And I think more than that, what we're invited to do through today's readings is really when we have someone that we're irritated with or have someone who we look upon as a sinner, the challenge for us is not to turn away from them, but rather to look into them, to look at this person that we find disagreeable or who has offended us, and to say, now, why are they like that? It's a dangerous thing to do, because when we look deeply into another person, we often discover things that make us feel sorry for them rather than angry, that make us embarrassed to realize well, how much we take for granted that they don't have. That's a wonderful way for us to fast and to give alms in these last weeks of Lent, to look to those people that irritate us, either people that we meet on the street or people in our neighborhood or people that we live with or people that we see on television that we can't quite stand, and to look past that anger that we have to say, Lord, let me see them with your eyes. The psalmist today said that people go out weeping, bearing seed, but they come home with shouts of joy carrying the sheaves, the difference between sowing and reaping, the time when we plant and the time when we collect. Lent is a time for us to plant, to plant seeds of justice, to plant seeds of mercy, and goodness. And if we can do that, it's a struggle, but if we do that, then we come to an Easter full of rejoicing, an G- Easter in which we see the fruits of the, of the planting that we've done, and we see how we've been called by the Lord and are drawn more closely to him. As we continue in our Mass and in this Lenten season, we thank the Lord for his merciful love, for he has done great things for us, and we ask him to help us that we may show that joy that we have in him by ourselves being merciful and kind to all that we meet. Let us stand and together profess our faith in a God of kindness and mercy using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Jesus has assured us that wherever two or more are gathered in his name, he is present in their midst. Confident of God's presence here among us, let us offer to him now our prayers of petition. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Peter, our Archbishop, 
that the Holy Spirit may give them the wisdom, strength, and courage to continue to lead our church in difficult times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our archdiocese, as we continue the process of restructuring and renewal that the Holy Spirit will give us with courage and wisdom during these times of challenge and change, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit guide the members of the church in listening to one another in a spirit of love and solidarity as we prepare for the 2023 Synod of Bishops in Rome, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, especially in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Then on Solidarity Sunday, we pray for Caritas Canada, development and peace, that their efforts to build a more just world find success. May we support their efforts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing power of the Holy Spirit for all the sick, for Jerry Hallwell, and we pray for all those affected in body, mind, and spirit by the ongoing pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for eternal peace and happiness for all our departed loved ones, especially Morris Loveless, Renee Stevenson, and Jamie Cody. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. For all of these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers that we offer you this evening, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, 
graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and again we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your Son, our Redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation. And as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, whose son I Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, whose son are in the highest, whose son are in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace. We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into, the one, one, into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
Let only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion, a prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you for you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe and respectful manner, we ask that you please follow these instructions. Please remain standing in your pew until invited forward by an usher. Ensure your face mask is correctly worn before coming forward and maintain a two meter social distance in a communion line. As you approach the line, sanitize your hands before receiving communion. After responding amen and after receiving Holy Communion, please step aside to consume the host and return to your pew as directed by ushers. Those unable to receive Holy Communion in the hand may come forward to receive a blessing. Our communion hymn 6.6 .6 in the celebrating song, One Love Released. One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit present in us all. One prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people, one love released, one bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit present in us all, one prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one peace. Is not this bread we share, the body of our Lord? Is not this wine we drink, the blood of Christ outpoured? One bread, one body. faith, one spirit, present in us all, one prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people. the bread of life, eat and you shall live. To those who share this meal, my strength I'll always give. One bread, one body, one cup, One faith, one spirit, present in us all. One 
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for help and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O oh Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need. We are sure you will provide, so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father, and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection, we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God. Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn this evening, number 439 in the Catholic Book of Worship, The Master Came to Bring Good News, 439. The Master came to bring good news, the news of love and freedom. Seek and seek the poor to build the peaceful kingdom. Father, forgive us through Jesus, hear us as we forgive one another. The laws fulfilled through Jesus Christ. The man who lived for others The law of Christ is serving love Our sisters and our brothers Father, forgive us Through Jesus, hear us As we forgive one another Seek the sinners, Jesus came to live among the friendless, to show them love and they might share the kingdom that is endless. 